East region was actually marked in purple. If you saw the map earlier, um, the East region cont contains a lot of those uh, states that are um, in the Northeast and many of those states only have a state championship. So that means that a lot of those teams in that Northeast region haven't yet competed. So we haven't seen too much action yet, but there haven't been some promising matches coming out of Virginia and um, New York. So specifically uh, starting off in Virginia, um, we see there was one qualifier that occurred uh, two weeks ago and we've seen some pretty strong teams. So currently number one in Virginia is team 8297 geared up and their highest non-penalty OPR at their first qualifier was 50.5, which is pretty competitive uh, in, to, like, in the score so far. Um, actually, alongside um, Team 14607, Robot Uprising, they actually held the world record for the highest scoring match with penalties. So mm -hmm. with penalties, they actually scored a total of 140 points, which seems crazy. But one of the biggest reasons for their high score was because of a lot of penalties given by their opposing alliance. Um, a really interesting um, thing that happened during that match was that the opposing alliance robot actually got stuck in the depot, in oh, their alliance's no. depot. So wow. because that happened, the every few sec, every like five or ten seconds or something, hmm. referees would count it as a minor penalty, and that score stacked up really fast. Um, and the red alliance um, ended up getting tons and tons of points because of those penalties stacking up so that's one thing really be careful of because of those boundaries of the depots um if you step into your alliance's depot if you're if you step into your the opposing alliance's depot and get stuck mm -hmm. there that could really mess up your team's score mm -hmm. absolutely um i did see that here in georgia as well there was one match where the winning alliance scored uh 116 points um of that the alliance actually scored one point 115 of those points 115 of those points were literally from penalties because they unfortunately got disconnected in the opposing alliance's uh, depot it's a very um it's a very crucial um and unfortunate uh, um type of type of penalty to uh, in uh, to get and yeah. uh, this really harps back i think to a few years ago i believe 2017 um in um in not an ftc an frc um where teams it was the it was steamworks i believe um, where that sort of that that even determined, I believe, the World Championships, the Houston World Championships that year. I think in a very similar way, these penalties can be quite unfortunate um, if they do um, come into play um, this year. Yeah, and a really interesting thing, like you can see it right there on the Blue Alliance, that uh, one robot fifty nine oh four, they're stuck in their Red Alliance's depot. So that I mean, it's again, it's really unfortunate to watch. But um, as I'm thinking. Could this be something used as sort of like a defensive tactic? Like if a robot gets stuck in the deep, like it's just on the spot thinking here, but um, I, this could be kind of like, yeah, there's a point. Um, I think a big thing that deters that is to be considered disabled um, or immune from a lot of the penalties that you get from being in a scoring zone like that. A referee or an FTA has to call you disabled and say, you are a disabled robot now. You don't get any penalties. But the thing is, no, you do. You still get those penalties even if your robot is disabled. The only difference if your robot is disabled is that the human player can still be placing blocks around your robot as long as it gets disabled, right? But oh, I believe the penalties far out... And it's unfortunate, but it is a facet of this game. It's, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's a crucial element of this game to prevent this taking advantage. Um, and, but like, so the penalties that you accrue from sitting in that depot um, are far outweigh the scoring that you can sort oh, of definitely. prevent from the opposing alliance. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one thing with that is I think it'll be interesting to see like how strict referees are at the different world championships and state championships uh, because I know like I've seen some uh, I've seen some meets recently and like referees aren't enforcing this rule uh, too heavily like if at the world championship it's heavily enforced I mean that could definitely turn some tables during matches. And another really thing uh, going back to re about referees is that. Um, when teams are scoring the stones across the bridge, that's actually a really interesting thing because sometimes, um, as far as I've seen, uh, teams can be like scoring, taking the stones and moving them across the bridge and not getting points for them because their robot wasn't all the way across the bridge or something like that happening. And I think that could be a small little thing that could cause some problems in points and scoring. What do you guys think yeah. about that? I mean, I think first has been very clear with the uh, with the guidelines about and the parameters for getting points for that. So if teams aren't following that, then I think that's completely on their end and not something that's a first issue. 
right. And uh, going into this match, this is actually the semifinal two, match number three, uh, from that Oakton qualifier in Virginia. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can see, like, some of these really high-scoring robots, um, especially 14607 in the black um, over there on the Red Alliance. Uh, that was actually one of the higher-scoring robots from Virginia. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can see their interesting uh, scoring mechanism actually uses multiple servos. It uses three or four servos uh, to actually flip the stone wow. around and do a lot of yeah. different maneuvers with it to score it. So that's, that was a really interesting thing I saw. And I love seeing it in person. It was it was really interesting to see. Um, what do you I guys wonder think about, how much... Yeah. I mean, I wonder how fun it was for their programmer to do that. It must oh, yeah. not have had a good time doing that. Yeah, you can, you can yeah. see it in action uh, quite a few times. It, it takes the stone and then it flips it like three or four times before getting into position. <laughs> so that's interesting thing about scoring mechanisms this year. Um, you see a lot of these robots with very similar um, intakes, but scoring mechanisms are coming out to be kind of unique. We, we see some with yeah. just linear slides going out um, horizontally, and we see others with like... Um, like turning Flip outs. yeah yeah exactly like turning things we see other robots with four bars going out um behind the robot and as you can see right here there's you know with multiple servos and they're making it work with yeah. that flipping mechanism so it's really interesting seeing the different outtake mechanisms this year i yeah. think that's it that's a huge thing that that's sort of different um yeah. otherwise the intake seems kind of repetitive uh, in terms of the meta with a lot of uh, flywheel based intakes yeah. yeah, I mean, I know, like in the past years, like last year in Rover Ruckus, the outtake was a pretty, uh, a pretty standard thing. You know, you just had your hole on the side for your uh, silver mineral, and then the little ramp going across. And like, I mean, that's what pretty much everybody ran. And then in Relic Recovery, you just had that dump truck robot just absolutely demolishing everyone. And I think this year with it is like, if you can make the design work, like, hey, more power to you. Like, go ahead, do it. Let's see how it works out. And I mean, we've seen some really cool stuff this year, as you've said, Ashray. Yeah, and another really cool thing that I've seen so far in the early in the early season is that a lot of teams have very you know very similar designs in terms of like you know the wheel based intake and then this like an outtake mechanism. So I'd be really interested to see how these intake and outtake mechanisms would develop um, over time and how like claw bots would compete with wheel based mm-hmm. bots. I think that's a really interesting thing going into like you know uh, say the World Championships in a few months. I think that would be something that's like interesting to look out for in the future what do you guys think about how yep. those two designs might evolve thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud live and independent 